Welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we're really excited to have you here. Uh, we have a very informative webinar planned for you. My name is Ashish Joy. Um, I lead marketing here at Upcodes. I'm joined today by Danielle Delahanty, Code Research Specialist here at Upcodes, who will be leading the conversation. Um, we're very excited to have you here. So let's just take a few minutes to look at the Upcodes platform. We all know that code research is highly fragmented. Um, whether it's knowing the codes uh, which are relevant or navigating the various iterations of adoptions and amendments, all of this is time consuming, fragmented, and expensive. Most organizations don't have a dedicated solution for code research and compliance. There's a wide range of solutions out there for project management, spec writing, drafting and authoring, plan review, and visualization, but there hasn't been a compelling solution for code compliance. This is why we started Upcodes. With Upcodes, anyone involved in the design, construction, or occupancy of a building, they spend less time searching for the right code and more time designing and building amazing things. Um, you have a consolidated platform for code visibility and access that enables automated and structured research um, that can be easily shared and referenced by anyone on the team. And since we've started, we've seen a significant uptick in usage and adoption across architecture, engineering, general contracting, building officials and plan examiners, and even ownership groups. So effectively, Upcodes is a comprehensive code compliance platform. It lets you easily research, collaborate, and calculate code requirements efficiently. Um, it modernizes code compliance, and it's the perfect solution for anyone involved in the compliance lifecycle from design to construction to occupancy of a building, including plan review, inspection, and even customer service. With Upcodes, um, you get access to over 1,700 state and city codes, along with over 180,000 amendments across 77 jurisdictions with over 1,200 detailed code diagrams. Our content team um, updates 7,000 code sections on average each month, and they monitor over 500 AHJ websites. Upcodes also gives you a reliable and up-to-date source for adopted codes. It's really easy to find the relevant code for a project with seamless access to codes, powerful search capabilities, and frequently updated code sections. And by far, one of the most uh, exciting updates to the platform has been Upcodes Copilot, your AI-powered code research assistant. It'll accelerate your code research with tailored responses to your code questions, you can go beyond manually gathering sections from various codes and chapters and unlock the ability to parse through massive quantities of code. Um, Copilot helps you catch sections you might have missed, and you get context on what a specific jurisdiction's adoptions mean for your project. Oh, and uh, we also ran Copilot through a handful of practice exams, and we were surprised by the results. Upcodes also helps you understand how the code has evolved, and it gives you real-world examples. You can build team-wide code expertise with detailed code diagrams and the ability to compare sections across jurisdictions or code year collections. Upcodes also lets you structure your code research and collaborate on projects efficiently. You can get stakeholders on the same page with tools to structure your research around projects, collaborate with your team, and build project templates. And Upcodes also helps you build code reports and export that research. You can efficiently determine code requirements with code calculators and code sheet exports. Furthermore, you can repurpose prior research to simplify the process for starting new projects. All of these investments that we've made and continue to make mean that our users love the platform and save precious time in their day when they leverage Upcodes. Uh, we're excited to hear from our users, and we're not done yet. We're continuing to listen to your feedback and are making meaningful improvements to our platform. Uh, we're going to take some time to talk about how easy it is to find the relevant code for your next project and the various tools available to you on the Upcodes platform. To do this, um, I'm joined by Danielle Delahanty, Code Research Specialist here um, at Upcodes. She has uh, 14 years of experience working in code development at the New York City Department of Buildings. In her time there, she led a variety of building and construction code projects and developed custom requirements suited to the dense and unique landscape of New York City. We're so privileged to have her on the team here, and we're excited to have her share with us today. Danielle, thank you for joining us. Hi, Ashish. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here today. Awesome. Um, 
a little uh, more background about me, just like what you mentioned. Um, I'm in charge of managing our content and our construction catalog here at Upcodes, and that includes managing the research team as well. Uh, before I joined Upcodes, I worked at my local AHJ, the New York City Department of Buildings. I started there as a college aide in technical affairs and then became a code coordinator, working with the technical committees to write the building codes and then get them through the city council adoption process for the city of New York. So um, I have uh, several years experience with really dense and complicated uh, codes. And so I love that stuff. And uh, that's why I'm here at Upcodes now uh, working on uh, many jurisdictions that we host. Uh, we host a lot. And so I'm really excited to, to showcase uh, some of the library in our catalog today with you, Ashish. So awesome excited yeah thank you danielle for that intro um so uh as part of our conversation today i wanted to ask you a handful of questions from the perspective of an aec professional so you're an architect engineer general contractor subcontractor who's managing code compliance for projects across a handful of jurisdictions so um let's dig in um so, so Danielle, um, you know, here's here's an example question, right? So, if my office is used to physical books for code research, what's the best way um, for me to switch over to kind of this digital code research experience that 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 Upcodes represents? Uh, sure, I'd love to get into that. I just want to make sure that you, I just shared my screen, that you're able to see it. I'm right on the Upcodes uh, homepage. We can see it. Yep. Okay, great. Okay, so this is uh, the UpCodes homepage. So just to touch on a few of the, on the question that you just had, you know, why switch over from hard copy books to using a digital code research tool? Well, uh, a couple things. I'm just going to click on this little icon on the left that looks like a stack of books. And this is our code catalog. So uh, this is the first kind of foray into our code catalog. And as you can see, uh, we land on this adoptions by publisher page, which showcases that we are hosting at this time about 200 uh, adopted publications for approximately 77 different unique jurisdictions. So that's a large, uh, large library. Uh, it's very broad and we're covering a lot of jurisdictions and a lot of the requirements in all of those jurisdictions, as you can see when I scroll down the left hand side all of our jurisdictions are there in alphabetical order. So our library is really broad, but it's also pretty deep. Uh, we're covering a bunch of different types of construction subject matters within uh, each adoption for the jurisdiction. So um, it's really great that way in that uh, we can host many, many books and adopted publications in one location, whereas uh, your bookshelf in your cubicle can probably only host two or three heavy binders at a time. Um, another great thing about this digital catalog is that the access to these codes is pretty seamless. Um, you can kind of click right into a jurisdiction and immediately access the content of those codes. Um, within three clicks, you're already reading a code text and you can kind of easily scan through and uh, make sure that you're uh, working quickly if you found that you've lost your place or you're not in the right, uh, right section. With the book, you probably have to start over, go back to the table of contents in the beginning and uh, start kind of with your book closed. Here, you can use the intuitive table of contents to help you hop around, jump around. Um, another thing I wanna point out is that our catalog is uh, fully up to date and um, we really pride ourselves on that. We have a research team that's fully committed to uh, researching amendments, updates, supplements, errata. And on average, our team is doing about 2,000 code section updates per week. So we really are uh, staying on top of all of that uh, code adoption, code amendment action that's happening at the jurisdiction level. So um, those are just some of the highlights as to why, uh, you know, this digital code catalog is really great to um, help you dig into the codes and enhance your research. Thanks, Danielle. Um, so tell me more about that, uh, kind of that process of working with jurisdictions. How has the UpCodes content team prioritized accuracy? What does that process look like? And, and maybe a deeper question that I'm trying to answer for myself is, 
can I trust Upcodes as a reliable place for up-to-date code adoptions? That's a great question. And I'm really glad you asked that uh, because that, like I said earlier, I alluded to that. That's something we really pride ourselves on. I'm going to take you away from the Upcodes uh, catalog right now to our accuracy page, which uh, anyone can visit on their own. It's up.codes slash code hyphen accuracy. And uh, the page is large. You know, we have a lot of uh, details on here. I'll just scroll kind of quickly, uh, which will show you, you know, really in depth onto how we're researching adoptions, amendments, errata, and working with local AHJs to make sure that what we're doing is accurate and up to date. But I just kind of want to showcase this uh, quick little feature here and, and just remind everyone on the webinar that, you know, our team is performing full-time research, you know, their entire uh, job is making sure that we're researching code adoptions and, and looking for advanced code adoptions in the future. We're also tracking these AHJs um, with technology tools and also doing a lot of manual auditing uh, by reaching out directly and coordinating with AHJs at the government level to try and get a heads up or an insider scoop on what's coming uh, with their code adoptions or uh, even to the level of analyzing the code requirements once they've been adopted with them uh, to identify discrepancies, errors, or inconsistencies. Um, so we're really working closely with the AHJs on a regular basis and then also performing you know, comp comprehensive reviews on our end uh, to make sure that uh, we're doing the work that the AHJ can't do sometimes, which is put a whole bunch of extra eyes on this uh, massive amount of text. And um, sometimes we flag things for them and uh, share those things with uh, the AHJs and they're really pleased uh, to have someone else doing that kind of additional review for them. So uh, this is just kind of a few couple uh, bullet points of what the content team works on regularly. So I urge everybody to kind of take a deeper look. Like I said, you scroll down, there's a lot more detail. I won't uh, read it to you now. But uh, the code accuracy page is a really great page to uh, kind of understand how we get these things up on upcodes. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, what you just said kind of really plays into, um, you know, the various projects that, um, you know, an AC professional could manage. So, for example, if I was managing projects, uh, you know, uh, in San Francisco and Denver, and if those would be my two locations, um, is there a way in the UpCodes experience to prioritize those jurisdictions for my research, Danielle? Oh, that's that's an awesome question. So absolutely. So on our left-hand side, once we're in the code catalog, on the navigation, you can see that all of the jurisdictions are in order in alphabetical order. And then you have um, your, your cities that are within the states uh, nested underneath. So um, like I mentioned, it's a long list of 77. You may not want to always scroll down. So you said San Francisco and Denver. One of the really great things about the table of contents feature here on the navigation is that once you hover over a jurisdiction, a little star will appear on the right-hand side of that jurisdiction name. You can click that star. So I'll do that for San Francisco and for Denver here. And now those two jurisdictions are going to be starred at the top of my table of contents here. See, it has San Francisco nested under California and Denver nested under Colorado. And then I can just easily get to that jurisdiction's code building codes page uh, right when I want to instead of scrolling up or down. Um, I can star. A lot of them, I can star a few of them. I can star my my three favorites and I'll just pick, um, I'll add Hawaii just to add um, a state here. Um, but uh, that's a really great way to, to navigate and to use uh, the easy star jurisdiction on, on the left-hand side, because then it can bring you straight to uh, your favorite jurisdictions so that you can view um, those codes. Awesome. Yeah, that's super helpful. Um, so Danielle, if, you know, the, the, the team I'm a part of the office I'm a part of is trying to navigate the adoptions, um, like that, you just, you, you know, you're kind of showing it to me here. What's the fastest way for me to find, um, so, so I see a large list of adoptions here. 
but what's the quickest way for me to like dig into the specific one or two that I'm I'm going after for my project? Right. So our catalog is large and, and is continuing to grow. So that's a really great question. Um, you'll see that once I, I clicked on Denver, it brings me to the Denver jurisdiction page. And automatically, I'm already uh, filtered to see the current codes that are applicable for Denver. So this is already uh, using this wonderful filter that's at the top of each jurisdiction page to uh, land me on the current requirements because it is assuming that's where I'd like to be. However, uh, this is a filter and we host uh, multiple code packages for different uh, cities and states. So um, right now it's just showing current. I'm gonna toggle that to all. And so now it'll show me all of the uh, Denver building codes that I have which includes both the 2019 and 2022 construction package years. Um, so that's one way to filter through. If you know that you want to be uh, in the current, you can filter by code year. Um, another great way is to filter by code type. So we have a variety of different code types that are down below that have been adopted by Denver. You can see accessibility, building, electrical, elevator, energy, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to pick here mechanical. And so now I filtered all of the current mechanical codes that are applicable to Denver here. And you can see it's given me three options below. Um, I can even take that further and filter by publisher. If I wanted to see only the ASME publications, do that here. And it leaves me here with ASME B 20.1. I could also, um, Use the, the free text option, which is really great if you want to just, if you're not sure uh, what you're looking for, or you're not sure the exact name, you could always type in something like sprinkler or sprink. I don't even have to finish writing that. And that'll bring up all the sprinkler codes that are adopted uh, for Denver here. And then I can always um, jump right into one of those uh, and get that text directly here. And now we're in chapter six of NFPA 13 as adopted by Denver. Beautiful. So also, um, before you before you come back, I wanna tell you one more really cool thing is um, also if you're using this free text and you're typing in something that, uh, and it turns out that we do not have it. Um, I'm gonna type in, wrought like I was going to write wrought iron. So we do not have a wrought iron code for, for Denver here. So there's a wonderful make a request button that pops up. It brings a, a new uh, window for you and you can say, I want a wrought iron code for Denver. And it's called wrought iron 111. And then you could say, please send that right over to us. And we'll let you know if, um, We'll let you know when or if we're able to get that on uh, for that jurisdiction or in general. So that's another really great thing is that if you use the free test, free, free write filter, um, you can even get to make a request for us uh, for a pub if we don't host it. Love it. Um, so Danielle, when so so I'm used to you know telling my team you know there go to this section in this physical book. Um, and I'm used to like, just saying, go to this chapter, go to this section, um, switching over to kind of a digital first experience. Um, when someone from my team wants to navigate to a specific code section, um, what's the fastest way for, for me to do that in upcodes? Great. Uh, sure. Let's, let's jump, jump into some text and, and see what the actual, uh, code viewing experience is like. So I'm going to use the Denver Mechanical Code because now that we filter that we want the current code and we want to see all Denver's mechanical codes, I'm going to use this one right here. And it brings me right to um, the Denver Mechanical Code. And I'm just going to pop right into Chapter 4. And um, like I said earlier, one of the great things about um, the navigation on the left-hand side is that it follows you along as you work. And so you, as you continue to go down, it will continue to open and expand and follow you so that you don't have to kind of rediscover where you are. You can see 
and kind of understand where you're where you're moving throughout the sections of that chapter without having to refer back to a paper TOC that's in the front that you can't actually easily know where you're going. So that's one of the things I really like to use is I like to toggle along on the table of contents on the left as I navigate through the code. Another option is um, just to scroll through um, and to look through each section here is its own uh, section and link. So um, like I said, see there, the, it follows you. Um, the table of contents will follow you and then each section has its own um, cool information that's in there um, that I wanna show uh, that's very cool that you can't do um, with a paper book. So first things is that here I am in the Denver Mechanical 401.4 intake opening location. And I see that in uh, section two, it's requiring me, um, or it's letting me know that there's an exemption in item three of section 503, 501.3.1. Well, one of the great things is, is that I can jump straight to 501.3.1 um, just by clicking on this link here. And that'll bring me to a different, uh, directly to that exact section in chapter five of the mechanical code. Another really great feature is that at the bottom, you can see there's a yellow preview box of that section. So I don't have to go visit that section blind. I actually can go and know that this is actually going to be the section for location of exhaust outlets. So that's very helpful. And it also gives me a little preview, excuse me, a preview of the text in that section. If I scroll down to item number four, it also can give me a cross-reference outside of this code. So earlier, that was just a reference into chapter five of the Denver Mechanical Code, which is the code we're already in. But in item four, it's referencing section 1612 of the Denver Commercial Building Code, which is a different code. But um, you can also access it very quickly. If I click on this link, it's gonna bring me directly to 1612 of the Denver Building Code. And um, if I hit back, I should be brought straight back to where I was in the mechanical code. So no more losing your place, uh, no more keeping one finger in one end of the binder and one finger in the other end of a binder, and then your colleague with the post-it holding the third point. Um, you can actually even just op open them both up in two separate windows and have them side by side if you wanted to. Another really great feature about reading the text is the opportunity to hover over a defined term. So right next to that cross-reference is a defined term outdoor air. So if I hover my mouse over outdoor air, it'll give me a preview in the bottom of the actual definition from chapter two of the mechanical code. If I click on that term, it'll take me to the actual term in chapter two of the mechanical code, not just the section header. And I'll be able to read that uh, quickly. And uh, also when I click back, I'll be brought straight back to where I was in 4014. So uh, that's huge for me, uh, just because of this swapping back and forth is usually 80% of the time that people are spent using code uh, code research and, and doing code review. So those, um, those are some things that I think are really, really special about our codes. Yeah, that's super helpful, Danielle. The ability to like directly link the additional context and resources I have as I'm browsing. Um, that that's super helpful. Um, you know, as I'm as you know, myself or a teammate is browsing this code section, this mechanical code. Um, you know, what are some of the tools I, I'm noticing there on the toolbar, uh, on the section there that there's a couple other things. Could you walk me through what those do for me? Absolutely. I'm glad you asked. So you could see this toolbar here and it has about, uh, five or six nifty tools on it. And the first one is probably one of the best ones. Well, I don't want to say that they're all the best, but this one's really great in that this is a copy link. It's as simple as you can hit that. And it'll copy a link directly to this section that you can therefore pop in an email. You could pop it in a note to yourself. You could um, edit anywhere that uh, you could share it with a colleague. You could put it in your own research documentation. Um, so that's a really great way to be able to share this text section for Denver 
with someone and know that they're looking at the exact same version that you're looking at. Um, one of the things that really was hard for me at the job at DOB was not being able to rely on what someone else was looking at and being confident that what I was reviewing was exactly what they were reviewing. And so this is one of the ways to eliminate that by using a shared source um, that you both can count on as accurate and um, just being able to share that with a, a, a click of a toolbar and popping that right in an email. So that's one that's really great. Um, another one that's really great more on that vein is uh, bookmarking. So uh, bookmarking, I think we're all pretty familiar with, but that's where you save one of your favorite sections or a section that's really important to you that you keep coming back to or that it keeps coming up. You just hit the little bookmark, bookmark button and then all of your bookmarks are saved over on the left-hand side underneath the code library towards the bottom. And then you'll have a a listing of all of your bookmarks organized by jurisdiction, organized by code year, organized by code book. And you'll be able to easily reference that section again and again without having to uh, navigate back through the table of contents from where you were. Um, so that's another really great feature about um, the toolbar, the bookmark. Another really great feature on the on the toolbar is adding a comment. Uh, this is a way that you can just document whatever your thoughts are, whatever uh, you're working on at the time about this section. Uh, something like, I don't understand item four. You can make sure to memorialize that and either direct that towards uh, someone else on your team that you're working with, um, who's also looking into the Denver Mechanical Code, especially section 4014, and maybe they can pick it up and work on it too. Um, it's another way to flag uh, and to share uh, knowledge about uh, what you're reviewing when you're actually doing the code review. Another uh, feature on the toolbar that's pretty cool is Copilot. So uh, Copilot is our AI code research assistant that uh, helps you research faster uh, and it accesses our entire uh, code catalog, all of our uh, millions of sections of codes uh, to create a, a customized uh, response uh, or suggestion or advisement or summary for you um, on how to proceed with your code question or your code research. So uh, Copilot's also really cool. Uh, that's the last button here on the toolbar. Another thing I wanna talk about uh, that's right underneath the toolbar is this green badge here that says diagram. So di anytime there's a green badge at the top of a section, there's a diagram below. So this is just to make sure that you notice that there's diagrams below in a large section. So. Upcodes has diagrams uh, which are created by our team here, and they are uh, visualizations that really help illustrate complex code requirements and help you understand how to apply uh, those technical, unclear uh, code requirements uh, to your actual job. And so the diagrams have illustrations, notes, explanatory text, uh, relevant sections that you may also want to visit, uh, tags, and then also uh, the little copy link option here is you can just copy that uh, illustration and diagram and send that directly with a colleague or whoever you're working with. Um, so that's a really uh, another wonderful thing uh, on each section uh, that we do here at Upcodes where we find that a, a code text needs clarification or someone has written into us that that this section probably really needs an illustration or a diagram uh, to make it clear. Uh, we, we listen to our user feedback and we uh, work on those illustrations. So anytime you see a green diagram badge, is um, there'll be diagrams related to this section that you should take a look at. Thanks, Danielle. Um, you mentioned um, that Upcodes works with AHJs. Um, I know how difficult it is to manage the frequent amendments within the physical code books. 
Um, and knowing that there are like, you know, if I'm working on similar projects across multiple jurisdictions, um, you know, it's, it's painstakingly uh, stressful to kind of consider those code differences and adoptions. How can upcodes help me um, kind of be more aware of how the code has evolved in a jurisdiction? Great question. So right next to, uh, so the first, uh, great question. One of the first things I want to bring your eye to is this orange badge, which is directly next to the diagram badge. So it's, it's kind of hidden when I go near the toolbar. I think it's because I have a bookmark section. But um, here it is in orange. And that flags any time that a local jurisdiction has made an amendment to this section of their code. So that's a, a bright indicator, a sign that this code has been modified by Denver. Um, so always uh, keep your eyes peeled for amendment badges. If a section doesn't have an amendment badge at the top, that means that it has not been amended and it's the same as the base code. So another awesome thing is if I go over to the table of contents in the code that I'm in and I hit the settings icon, which is a screw, I can actually turn on and turn off amendment styling. So uh, for amendment styling, the way that we display it on upcodes is anything that has been amended or added is green and anything that has been, sections that have been deleted are red. So you have the option of turning this amendment styling on. You can also uh, turn it off so that you're just looking at a seamlessly integrated code and you don't really care what the amendments are. You could select it so that you're only looking at the sections that Denver has amended. Or you can have it on what I have it on selected now, which is amended green, deleted sections red. So I have the amendment styling on, make sure I hit apply. And I hope you can see, you can see right above uh, that 401.2 ventilation required has been deleted. It's uh, stricken through, there's an amendment badge in orange, and also the text is deleted in red. So that's a, a way to see on a granular level what the actual text change is and the badge flags for you on a larger level that this section has been amended in general. Um, in 401.4, you can see some of the changes that Denver made here is to rename uh, their building code, the Denver Commercial Building Code, and then add the word fan before manufacturer's instructions in items three and four. Um, it might be a little bit visually clearer if I show you the example of 4022, ventilation area required. Here you can see that Denver has added uh, two sentences to the back end of this section, and that's uh, an amendment specifically made by them. So that's uh, two ways that you can see, you know, how the amendments have affected a jurisdiction and then also a code section in, uh, specifically. But another thing I want to talk to you about, Ashish, is code compare. So uh, I'm going to show you the, the two ways to get there. Uh, also on the really cool toolbar tool bar for the section, there's uh, two documents with arrows at each other comparing each other. So you can hit code compare, and that'll bring up uh, a window which wants to know what codes I'm looking to compare. It's starting me in where I was in the mechanical 20, uh, 21 code for Denver, and I'm going to try and see what Denver used to say in their 2018 mechanical code. So I hit compare, and it's really great because what returns from upcodes is a side-by-side -side comparison of the text as it was adopted and enacted in 2018, and then again, uh, 2019, excuse me, and then for 2022 for Denver. So uh, you can see the, the changes in 402.2 are not that significant um, from 2018 to 2022 excuse me, from 2019 to 2022, but it's a really great visual demonstration. I'll show you a different example of what has changed from code to code. You can see here in 401.4, my favorite section, that there is a big change. There's a big change on item three. Um, there's a whole other uh, separation being not required uh, for certain open air intakes. So um, that's really important. Uh, people really want to see what has changed over time or what has changed uh, within a jurisdiction. Another quick example, if I have the time to show you 
I'm going to stop my comparison here. Over on the table of contents on the left-hand side, you also have the opportunity to code compare from here. So I'll do it that way. And this time I want to try a different jurisdiction. I don't want to use Denver. I want to see a totally different place. So I'm going to select a different jurisdiction. I'm going to scroll down to O and pick Oregon. And I'm going to pick 2021 so that they are similar in year. And I want to see the differences now between the Denver uh, mechanical code and the Oregon mechanical code. And here, right, a, right, a, right away, I get a side-by-side -side comparison of Denver on the left, Oregon on the right. In 402.2, the sections look significantly different because Denver has an extra two sentences on the back end of the ventilation area required. So this is a really cool tool um, that just immediately gives you a visual access to what's different, either amongst uh, codes within a jurisdiction or within different codes amongst different jurisdictions or with the same code amongst different jurisdictions. So really super cool. Uh, one of my favorite things uh, to use um, on the site. Here's another question, Danielle. Um thinking through kind of the design life cycle uh, for architects, engineers, GCs, um, when someone submits a plan to be reviewed, um, I, you know, if, if, if that person wanted to go through their own due diligence with each jurisdiction. So like, for example, I can see the Denver mechanical code here, but what if I wanted to verify this with the respective agency um, how would I do that? Does Upcodes give me the tools to do that? So we actually provide all of our uh, research materials uh, once we put any code on the web on our website. So for example, that's a great question. So that gives me the opportunity to kind of showcase our adoption info. So let's jump back into Denver Mechanical Code. You can see here right on the the main, excuse me, that was my drink, the main uh, page for Denver that um, we have the effective dates here. We have the base code adopted with or without amendments. And this is just kind of a sneak peek, uh, a sneak peek, excuse me, into the adoption info. And if you hit click more, it's going to bring you down to the adoption info for that jurisdiction. So for the entire jurisdiction. And so you can see we host uh, these documents that are listed there for Denver for the two different code packages that we host for Denver 2022 and 2019. So everything that we host above on Denver's page has been incorporated and integrated as per these uh, final source documents that we're linking you to here in the adoption info. So if you want to do your own dil due diligence, which is one of the things that I've been doing for you know, 15, 16 years is researching uh, law adoptions, is to click through, review these final source adoptions, uh, look at the amendments yourself if you'd like to, uh, find the effective date, and and then also uh, you can, uh, we also provide information at the bottom about uh, the agencies that we work with. You can uh, coordinate, reach out to them directly if uh, and share any of these uh, documents and say, hey, is this, this the right thing? Uh, we've already done that, but um, we kind of, make all of our work available so that users can feel comfortable if they want to check it themselves or if they want to investigate further. Um, all of that information is going to be in the adoption info. Uh, Denver doesn't get that much crazy action, so this list is not very large. But you, you'll you see, I'll give you an example, like my own old stomping grounds, um, New York City, uh, their codes have only been effective for less than a year, and I'll scroll down. You can see how many changes have already happened since November 7th, 2022. So we're tracking everything, um, and we're tracking every single law, rule, memo, uh, state statute that could come out that would make a change and uh, to one of the codes that we're hosting. And if we do that, it's available in our adoption info. Um, so make sure to take a look. Yeah. Thank you, Danielle. I know we're, we're right at time. So, so much of what we have shared with you today, um, you know, like 
the, the code viewer, the, the code experience, um, that's, that access is free and, and visible to you um, as someone who is a code researcher. However, uh, the premium features that, that, that Danielle kind of walked through, like code compare and, you know, bookmarking and, you know, even co-pilot, all of those kind of extra features, those are available uh, when you pay for kind of a premium uh, upcodes plan. And so you can start that and you can learn more about that uh, by visiting up.codes slash pricing. Um, you can even use your phone to, to scan the QR code that you see here. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we're really excited to see how you leverage UpCodes for your next project. If you have technical questions, you can contact us directly at support at up.codes. Danielle, thank you for taking the time uh, to walk us through the UpCodes experience. Any final uh, words for the for the group, Danielle, before we sign off? No, but thank you so much. This was lovely and uh, hop around up codes. I think you'll be really happy with uh, the catalog we have. Thank you all for joining. Have a great day. Uh, we hope to see you again.